Rob, what are the names we should be focusing on here? Yeah, so Kelly, not an oil name. And in this case, a natural gas name. Uh, Chenier Energy is a, is a great name. The world needs a lot more natural gas if we're going to have more energy and yet less carbon. So natural gas is a great way to decarbonize. Chenier Energy can provide a lot of energy security, not only domestically, but, but actually to the rest of the world by exporting liquefied natural gas, or LNG, to countries across the world. And as a result of that, uh, th these countries often replace natural gas or replace coal with natural gas, and, and it ends up uh, being very positive from an environmental perspective. And, and Chenier is actually the largest LNG exporter in the U.S. The U.S. is the largest exporter of natural gas in the world right now. Right, and I have to imagine they'll escape the political scrutiny that oil will meantime be under, uh, because even though, well, or unless natural gas prices spike so much, it affects uh, even to a greater degree what people are paying for their bills at home. What about in the oil space? Is there anything right now that you feel like people could be comfortable with exposure to? Yeah, so so in the oil space, so where, where we are right now is there's a big dance going on in oil right now between uh, the U.S. And, and OPEC. OPEC is waiting on the U.S. to decide on Iranian sanctions to determine if more oil is coming to the market. The U.S. is actually waiting on OPEC to get back to full capacity. And what I mean by that is producing at the same level they were prior to COVID. Once we get all that solved, looking forward in the longer term, the, the answer is going to be we're going to need more U.S. and Canadian oil. And so as a result of that, you need more infrastructure. We don't want to get too concerned about the ups and downs of oil prices. In fact, I'd like to see oil prices lower. Um, for, for all consumers. But infrastructure, companies like Plains All American, who operate really critical and essential infrastructure in the Permian Basin, that's where the production growth is going to come from in the U.S. That, that stock right now actually offers di uh, sh uh, shareholders a significant dividend yield. We'll have some growth associated with it, too, and a high free cash flow yield, as you talked about on the, uh, at the start. And another one of your infrastructure picks, and, and this is the theme here, is Enbridge. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler. So the other factor that nobody's really talking about much right now is the role that Canada can play in providing global energy security. So Canada has a significant amount of oil and natural gas that can be exported uh, internationally as well as, uh, you know, obviously exported here into the U.S. So Enbridge, actually, once again, another in key infrastructure name that provides shareholders the opportunity to get to, to uh the infrastructure in Canada that will be, be when oil is exported from Canada to the U.S., Enbridge is the pipeline that it goes through. And so en Enbridge is an opportunity to, and, to experience significant growth when we think we'll see significant uh, growth from Canada oil and Canada natural gas volumes in the next several years. This, this is through this existing pipelines that they have. Picture. Through existing pipelines that they yeah. have. This is not obviously the, uh, the, um, the Keystone pipeline. The Keystone, yeah. Yeah, you know, I know that that was that was their competitor, uh, TransCanada. No, no, mm -hmm. en Enbridge has had existing infrastructure in place since the 1960s, and obviously has upgraded right. it over the years. But no, it's existing pipelines they already operate. All right, Rob Fummel, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it.